Can you give us a quick intro about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Aaron Su. I am a PhD student at Indiana University and I'm currently working on data parallel compiler development. And I work closely with Dialog Limited, which produces what I consider the preeminent APL implementation. So what got you into functional programming? So functional programming is basically what I've been doing almost my entire life. So in when I was in high school, I started taking some computing courses and they taught using QBasic. And when I started getting to the point where I wanted to do a radix sort with recursion, QBasic had a stack limit of something insanely small, like 10, 10 stack calls or something like this, and they didn't do any tail call optimization. So I quickly found it almost impossible to do a radix sort in this fashion with QBasic in any meaningful way. So uh, my teacher suggested that maybe I take a look at Lisp. And uh, from there, I did some research on Lisp and saw Scheme. And when I examined and played around with Scheme, got onto the forums, uh, chat rooms, and started playing around with things, within a tiny short order, I had a fully working Radix sort implementation that was readable and easy. And just the degree to which I could express the ideas changed my entire perspective on what programming was supposed to be. And from then on, I, I just went whole hog into the functional programming paradigm. What has been your best moment or highlight working with FP? So again, since I have been working with functional programming for pretty much all of my programming career in any meaningful way, I would prefer to probably say what is the highlight of programming in general. And I, I think I enjoy almost everything I do about programming, so that's hard, but one of the big things that sticks out as extremely formative was the point at which I realized that functional programming and programming in general wasn't just another tool, but it was a language, a, a fundamentally human concept that altered and affected our intellect and our ability to solve problems. And this idea that the language that you're working with can fundamentally change the way in which you approach the problem and the way in which you think about the problem, the, the idea that a programming language was a deep thing that embedded itself as a form of deep knowledge into your psyche in, in a way that changes the way you think about the world, I think that was <coughs> probably probably one of the, the, the biggest and most formative aspects of my current uh, programming focus. All the mainstream programming languages are adding functional programming features. Most new languages and frameworks are strongly influenced by functional programming. What is your advice to object-oriented programmers? Yeah, so everybody's doing FP now. That's a very popular semantic model to begin adding into languages. And I think that that's promising, but in some, in some sense, I think perhaps we're focusing on the tools rather than the ideas in, in a, a sense. So, you know, just because everybody starts using the slide rule doesn't mean that the slide rule is really the point. The point is that we're trying to alter and optimize our languages for something. And it's that something that I think people forget about. And there's sort of this implicit suite of values that are held within the traditional software engineering community and the object-oriented programming community at large. And this set of values focuses on things like um, code modularity and reusability in a very narrow sense. These have sort of become dogmas within the programming communities and within the object-oriented communities. And even though we've imported some of the functional programming semantics, some of those elements, I think we're in danger of missing the point a little bit if we don't start to also examine our fundamental value system around the languages that we design. So I would encourage the object-oriented programmers to maybe be willing to re-examine 
what it means to write good software and what it means to have a good programming language and what the actual values are, why they exist, and maybe question whether or not they're still helpful in our current situation. And sometimes I think we get entrenched into a, a traditional mindset about how we should embrace this or that um, way of doing things. And it's not just about whether it's object-oriented or functional in its style or its paradigm. It's about the fundamental human values that we're applying to our design constraints and how those are affecting the languages that we build and, the la and how we use those languages. And I think we need to bring a humanistic or a human-focused element back into the programming community rather than sort of relegating the human mind and the human psyche to an afterthought, which I think is is very often done in the traditional software engineering community where we are attempting to apply so many metrics and rigor uh, that we forget about the, the human side of things. You are presenting Does APL Need a Type System and APL Workshop Intensive and Array Oriented Functional Programming at the conference. What are some of the key takeaways from your sessions? So the a does APL need a type system is my thought out response to that question, which is a question I get a lot throughout um, my, my musings in online and in person. A lot of people ask me about that. And I think that's a question that actually goes far beyond APL and is a question about what does it even mean for us to want a type system? What is a type system itself? why do we care about them, and uh, maybe I, I'm hoping that people who attend that talk will come away with a, an idea of, you know, maybe, again, checking the value systems that they're using and checking why they're using a type system, and sort of get a better understanding of why and when a type system is valuable, and also maybe perhaps a different perspective on how types can be embraced within a language outside of the, the normative methods. And then um, with the Array-Oriented Functional Programming Workshop, that's a short workshop. And I'm hoping that the big takeaway there will be a set of ideas for people to go from a functional programming paradigm into an array programming paradigm. You won't learn to be an array programmer just with that one workshop, but what I'm hoping to give people is an anchor, some kind of hook that will give them that leg up they need to begin becoming really productive in an array programming paradigm, which is often one of the most difficult things about going from a traditional programming paradigm like object-oriented, imperative, or functional into an array paradigm like APL. And for those who want to then go do a deep dive and really actually spend time hands-on, nitty-gritty, working on your actual practice of being able to solve problems in APL and solve problems using array thinking, that's what the intensive workshop is for. And that's where you'll get to play around with and see how your ideas can meet the paper in code and see it work and really expand on that idea from the functional programming workshop to a full-blown practical application of that uh, and hopefully begin to see the process that you need to apply, the way you need to think about things in order to continue growing in your ability to apply array thinking into your problem sets. The conference has a total of 54 sessions. Which of these sessions are you excited to attend? Yeah, so I think one of the ones I'm very interested in talk, uh, seeing is uh, um, Snoyman's um, functional programming for the long haul. I, I, I really like the concept of examining a language not just on its initial buy-in, but on its value for the long tail. That sounds very, very interesting. And I think uh, Hibbard has a session on property-based testing, and I'm not a big fan of unit tests, so anything we can do to expand the range of the types of tests that we do, and automate some of our testing, and test at a higher level, maybe a more meta level, I'm, I'm a big fan of. I think uh, program verification and making verification scale in meaningful ways is um, 
really important. So I'm hoping I'll, I'll see something interesting there. And then I think Jane is doing a talk on functional programming GUIs or functional GUIs, uh, which, which usually means something like FRP or these other constrained architectures. And I'm, I've been fascinated with the, the functional UE paradigm for a long time, but I've never been fully satisfied with what exists. So I'm hoping that there, there will be some new nuggets or something to explore in that, in that session. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. All right, thank you. Good luck. I'll see you there.